Hello everyone, Nadlabs here. Today we're going to be making a very simple uh, laser bullet tutorial. This was actually a request and essentially uh, you can see right here what we're going to be making is a, a laser firing from the player which is able to um, uh, kill enemies as well as uh, update a score counter. So let's get started. So when we make this um, uh, game or tutorial, I just want to bring a couple things to attention. When, we ma when you make your tile map, you want to make sure that, although this looks a little bit complex, you want to make sure that any sort of tile that has a, a collision shape and these are the blue ones and these are just fake walls I put so um, the, the player doesn't seem like they're in some sort of void they actually have a room to be in. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make a area 2D which is our enemy. Uh, we just attach a sprite collision shape right and we're going to go into its script and we're going to make a function called die which just Q freeze it, which means it is uh, deleted from the scene tree. And we're also going to make sure that uh, we connect the signal, which we can go right here on body entered, right? Uh, we're just going to double click it and you can click connect, but I already have it connected. So it gives me this block of code. If body, right, it just, I'm just using the variable here to uh, reduce errors. But um, whenever any body like our player or another enemy hits it, just Q free it. That's all we're going to be doing for the enemy code and the same thing for the uh, rigid body enemy which is just a, a Godot sprite uh, followed by a collision shape and uh, you want to do the exact same thing. You can add them to a group called enemy if that helps you manage your project but that's all we're going to be doing for the enemy and I'm not I'm you should save your projects but the reason I'm not saving is because I don't want to make any edits to this because I've already uploaded a github repository uh, which can uh, which the link can be found in the description. We're going to, if you want to have hit particles, you can have them. They're just for aesthetic purposes. And now we get to the player. Now on the player, I decided to make the player a, kinem a kinematic body 2D. We're going to have a visual effects line and make sure when you make this line, you have, uh, you make the pool vector two array. So that just means, uh, uh, an array of vectors. You want to make sure that the array of vector size is two. Don't make it four, 13, whatever. Just make it two because there's a, a start point and there's an end point which is going to be determined in code a sprite i'm just using the godot sprite because i find it easier for everyone uh, because you don't have to have any fancy sprites to make this uh fall or follow this tutorial we have a collision shape when you add a raycast 2d as a child of your player there's a couple things off by default which i don't know why they are uh, when you make it it's going to be disabled you want to make sure you enable that uh, you also want to make sure when you add uh, your ray as a child you have a very large number for the Y because it actually allows the ray to extend a very far uh, way and actually it, and the ray is then able to collide and check with collision uh, check collisions very far away. In addition, you want to make sure you can uh, uh, the array can check areas and bodies and that's about it. Uh, and then just a camera 2D if you want. Now, before making this tutorial, I was very scared of arrays because when uh, sorry, uh, before making this tutorial, I actually didn't like working with Raycast 2Ds because there were no signals that I could connect here. But then reading the documentation, I found it was very simple and we're going to get straight into it. So when we get to our player script, what we're going to do is we're going to declare these two variables right off the bat. We're going to get reference to our Raycast 2D and our visual effects line. In our physics process, we're going to, this is just, um, these two lines of code are just uh, here because of a uh, uh, simple player controller movement, but uh, what we're what I'm going to be focusing on is the raycast bullet stuff uh, function because here's where all the magic happens to make the laser work. These three lines of uh, these three lines of code are all about uh, how do we move the player? How does the player move in response to the mouse? Right, because we're getting a um, a variable to our global mouse position and we're trying to uh, set uh, make an angle from mouse to player. Right, uh, the variables should be self-explanatory and what we're doing is we're just setting the rotation of the player to our angle to mouse and it just results in this sort of a movement where we're able to uh, move around like this and the player is able to look at the mouse and now here's the uh, if statement that really makes the raycast 2d work so if the raycast 2d is colliding and is colliding is a function provided by the raycast uh, it just returns a true or false value if the raycast is colliding, so if this is true and this is true, which is if I'm pressing the shoot button, which I declared here in the project settings, I went to input map and I just uh, wrote down the action shoot. I clicked, I was, I clicked add, and then I was able to declare whatever shoot was is going to be. It could be the X button, it could be whatever you're doing, um, whatever your game is designed, uh, whatever console or 
platform your game is designed for. I, I'm, I'm making this for PC, so I just set it to my left mouse button. So we're going to do these three lines of code. So every time, every time we have a intersection with the array and we're pressing the shoot button, we're going to run these three lines of code. We're going to make a line a visual effects. We're going to make particles, another visual effect, and we're going to check if we can kill the enemy. If we released the shoot button, we're going to make sure that we reset the line. So there's no laser sticking out, confusing the player. Now we're actually going to go backwards. Um, and we're going to actually start with the reset line function because it's, Im it's imperative that you understand how arrays work. What we're going to say is that uh, the second point, which is number one, because arrays count from uh, zero. If you want a visual representation of what that means, if we count, we usually count one, two, three, but how computers or arrays count in specific count zero, one, two. Now, the reason if you go over here, a pool of vector twos uh, says zero, one. A zero one is actually the second point and the second point is actually what we're going to be making for uh, the laser and as you can see here I just uh, edited a bit so it looks a little bit nicer right I set the um, I set it to a gradient and I had a little bit of a I set the width curve to the um, decrease as the um, uh, laser goes farther away from the player just to give it a bit of a visual effect but essentially uh, that's just a little bit of uh, information but Every time we release the shoot button, we're going to reset it. When we make a line, we're going to, and this took, um, and I actually had to have a little bit of um, help to make this line of code, thanks to Kids Can Code. Um, and essentially what we're going to be doing when we make our line is we're going to get the collision point. And this is, of course, another function provided by Godot that allows us to get the point of intersection. If, if, that, if that doesn't make sense to you, essentially, Whenever um, the whenever the raycast collides with something, we're going to get that point of intersection, which is just a vector two, right? It's just a global coordinate of where did we hit that. That's how we uh, x form inverse is actually a uh, um, has to do with calculus and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm not going to explain how it works. Uh, this is just the line of code that makes it work. So that was the make line function. In the make particle function, what we are going to say is we're going to get reference to our uh, hit particles, which I showed earlier. We're going to set emitting to true. We're going to set the global position to where we hit the raycast. And we're going to get the parent and then add child to hit particles. The reason we don't say uh, add child is because we're going to be adding it to a child as the player. And that results in some really weird particles, as you can see. Uh, so if we say, if we rather say, oops, if we say, uh, get parent and Godot should update it. Oops, no, Godot didn't update it. So if we say get parent, then it just makes a very smooth and uh, stable line of where the particles uh, are. That's uh, the make particles function. And then the check if we can kill enemy. This took me some time to make, and it was actually a. Uh, I was actually really happy when I got it. The numbers that we're seeing in the output are not random. They actually have a a method to their madness. So we can see here when I hit a tile map, I get some random number like. 42 or if I go over here, it should be 43 or so. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, we get some random list of numbers, right? But if we hit an enemy, you can see it says zero. And the reason that uh, zero is followed by a bunch of random numbers is because there's a tile map behind the enemy. So you can see it gets zero every time we hit the area 2D or the rigid body. We can actually use this to our advantage and we can say, uh, if the raycast dot get collider shape, right? The reason the numbers were being printed is because of this function, again, provided by the Raycast2D, get collider shape. If the collider shape, which I showed as these numbers being printed out, if it's equal to zero, which is our rigid body or area2D, then we're going to do another uh, statement, or we're going to do another check. And this check here, uh, we're doing this check here because, we're doing this check here because uh, if the ray, uh, Raycast hits something that doesn't have the method die, which we defined in our enemy, then we get an error. So we're just going to make sure that it has the method die or if you're you have us if you have like um if you're making this a game and you have a uh, companion or you have some sort of friendly enemy or sorry not friendly enemy but friendly player next to you you're going to want to make sure that they don't die when you hit them with a the laser uh you want to make sure that it first has the method called die if it does if this returns true this returns true then we're going to get the collider the 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 thing that we collided with and we're going to call its own function which should be defined in its own code and it is for the enemy uh, area 2d and rigid body then we're going to just um, kill it 
Now over here I have get parent dot score plus equals one and this I'm going to explain in just a second and then essentially once you get passed into this block of code you have a, you have a hit and you're able to kill your enemy. Now we can see get parent dot score plus equals one and this is actually if we go to the game scene sorry the game scene that actually controls this uh, script uh, th that controls this scene we have a this is this is um we have a bit of a code i'm just going to collapse this for a second because that's not important to what i'm trying to explain but essentially what we have is um a score text this isn't the best way to do it this is just uh, a very simple way to do it we're actually going to be setting the um score label you saw earlier which is um blank but i can just like type any sort of text here for demonstration purposes we're going to set the score labels position to the player's position every frame we're going to make sure that's a little bit above their head and a little bit to the left because um, the reason we add a little bit to the left is because the way the coordinate system works in Godot is that um, positive is downwards, negative is upwards on the y-axis, but the x-axis is uh, remains the same where positive x is rightward and negative x is leftward. So, and the reason we have to move it a little bit to the left is because um, for control labels, for control nodes, right? If we go over here, you can see there's a control for anything that's a control node or for most things that are control nodes, uh, Godot measures it uh, or positions it from the top left but for things like um, sprites it's from the center so we have to move it a little bit to the left and of course these aren't the real values this is just um uh, random variables that are here to just give a little bit of aesthetics and um, I mean for example uh, the the half the half the rectangle isn't uh, 25 pixels it's just something to make it a little bit to the center so it doesn't look jarring or ugly so we're so I explained we're going to be setting its global position every frame just above and a little bit to the left of the player and we're going to uh, this is a little bit um resource uh, this is a this bit of a waste of resources but the score label dot tag the reason we're just setting it every frame is because this is just a tutorial and i made it really quickly but um we're going to be making sure that the score variable which i said we're going to be updating every time we have a hit uh we're just going to be adding plus one to it and so this should be self-explanatory at that point where it's a string of score we're going to concatenate it, which is just the way a fancy way of saying we're going to uh, make the sentence longer by adding a little bit of uh, uh, text. And the reason we have to put string here is because uh, Godot won't automatically recognize this is a that we're trying to add an in integer to a string. So we actually have to say oh, make this a string. And I hope that makes sense. But we're just trying to say uh, give us a score plus something else. All I have to say for how to make a laser in the Godot game engine. And if you're wondering how I made the lights, I explained this last time in my bullet tutorial. I just, I added world environment as a child. I went to background, I, I set it to canvas. I said glow enabled, and then I just lowered the HDR threshold. Make sure it's lower than uh, one, because if you have it anything above, there's no glow, but anything below there is, and you can just play around with it. And after all that, we get this really interesting laser effect where we can just uh, shoot our enemies uh, with this laser. And... That should be it. Thank you for watching.